the book and the title, Crippled America, is very tough. But unfortunately, we have to do what we have to do. And I think one of the reasons we've been doing so well in the campaign is because we tell it like it is. We tell the truth. And America is crippled. We owe 17 and now 18, and now it's actually very soon going to be 19 trillion dollars in debt. We have a military that doesn't have proper instruction from leadership. We don't know what we're doing. We're losing all over the world with trade deals. Uh, every country, no matter what country you talk about, you can just pick a name out of a hat. They're beating us in trade. And we can't go on like this any longer. It's impossible to go on like this any longer. I always mention, as an example, Sergeant Bergdahl, a traitor. We get Sergeant Bergdahl, they get five of the people they wanted, and they wanted badly. And that's not the way it's going to work anymore. So we write about it in the book. We tell lots of different stories of lots of different things. And I think it's going to be very instructional. Very important to me was instructional. When I did The Art of the Deal, I think one of the reasons it was so successful is that it was largely instructional. And even today when I speak, so many people hold up the book, The Art of the Deal, and the other books we've done. So this is one that probably not since The Art of the Deal, I have to tell this to Louise and Simon and & Schuster, uh, have I worked so hard on a book. And it was in a confined period of time. We wanted to get it out really, really quickly so that it pertained to what's going on right now. It's a moment of time. And we got it done. And David did a fantastic job. Where is David? Is he here? David? David did a fantastic job. And all of my people did a great job. They helped me so much because we are doing a couple of other things right now. So this was not easy getting this in. But we see by the lines, the lines go down to Park Avenue. They've been forming uh, since last night. And I'm going to be signing books starting at 12 o'clock. We're doing a couple of interviews and then we're signing books starting at 12 o'clock and that'll be uh, very exciting for me. But we have fans that have bought the book and they, uh, they just bought it. And some have been online now for 12 and 14 hours. I don't know how they're doing this, but they do it. They find a way. So I'm looking forward to getting to the signings. Does anybody have any questions, please? Oh, that's all? Just about 30 questions? Yes, go ahead, Katie. Well, I think it's a different book. You know, we just had polls come out today from Iowa, where I'm leading. You saw the new poll from Iowa. Uh, you saw the new poll in, in uh, New Hampshire, where I'm leading big. A poll just came out in Florida, where I'm leading big. Georgia, Texas, I mean, all over the place. Uh, and I think, you know, look, it's, we're doing well. And if you add Ben and myself, we're beating everybody by a lot. That seems to be the big story, that we're beating uh, they call it the establishment. It's called really the failed establishment because the establishment has let us down. Uh, but I don't know. I really don't know how his book is doing. Well, I think my book is very hard hitting. His is a different kind of a book and he's a different kind of a person. My book is very hard hitting. It says it like it is. And based on what Simon and Schuster just told me, it's selling like hotcakes. So we'll see. We're very different people. We have uh, very different qualities, and we are extremely different. And I'm different from all of the other candidates. Look, nobody can negotiate trade deals like me. We are going to take the $400 billion a year that we're losing with China. That's going to be turned around. Uh, the $75 billion a year that we're short on with Japan. The $50 billion a year that we lose to Mexico. And that's right, there will be a wall built. It will go up, it will be built, and people will come into the country legally. Uh, so, I mean, I'm much different than, you look at Marco Rubio, very, very weak on illegal immigration. You look at Ben, he's very weak on immigration, and he wants to get rid of Medicare. I mean, Ben wants to get rid of Medicare. You can't get rid of Medicare. It'd be a horrible thing to get rid of. It actually works. You get rid of the fraud, waste, and abuse. It works. So, when a man is weak on immigration and wants to get rid of Medicare, I don't know how he stays there. Go ahead, Tom. No, I think that really Marco is overrated. And frankly, had Bush been a better messenger, he has the better message. 
I mean, if that was me delivering that message, it would have been a much different story because he has a bit of, Marco doesn't show up to the United States Senate. He's representing the people of Florida, which by the way, that poll just came out today and I'm way up in Florida over everybody. But Marco is a sitting senator and he doesn't show up for the people of Florida. And I don't think he should be doing that. Now, Bush gave a very weak message. I agree with that. It was poorly delivered. But the facts are on Bush's side. And ultimately, I think Marco is going to be hurt very badly. And if you look at Mr. Singer, you have to see where Mr. Singer is coming from. And when you see where he's coming from, I think people are going to say, whoa, we didn't know that. But look at Marco's stance on illegal immigration. It's really trouble for him. I don't see how he can win. Okay, yes, Mark. Marco Rubio's personal finances are discredited. Oh no, his personal finance, all you have to do is look at his credit card. I mean, he is a disaster with his credit cards. And I'll tell you what, I love Florida. I, I'm in Florida all the time. And for years I've been hearing that his credit cards are a disaster. I would think when you take a look at it, you're gonna find that. But uh, his credit card debt and his problems with credit card and what he did when he was running the party apparatus with credit cards, I've heard about it for years. You'll have to find out. Well, he has a very bad record of finances. If you look at what happened with his houses, with his, you know, he, he certainly lives above his means. There's no question about that. Well, we're going to look. I'll tell you what, on the debates, it's very interesting because I don't really care that much. I want a room, I want a podium, and let's get going because I don't really care that much. But a lot of the people that are candidates, who I respect many of them, not all of them, but I respect many of them, they felt it was very unfair because Hillary Clinton was given all softballs. I mean, she wasn't asked one tough question. They didn't talk about her foundation. They didn't talk about any of the problems. They didn't talk about the emails. When the email problem came up, Bernie Sanders lost his whole campaign. I mean, what he did was so stupid from his standpoint. In order to get a one minute soundbite of some applause, he gave up the emails. That was the end of his campaign. First of all, people aren't going to his rallies anymore. He's finished. So unless something happens to her with respect to the emails, she'll easily be the candidate. But I will say this, she only got softballs. That's all she got. And if you look at the way we were treated, it wasn't the same way. With that being said, I don't really care. Yes. Your name is? Well, I think the Republicans actually are doing a pretty good job overall. They coalesced at that last debate because, I mean, it really started with me. The guy asked me a question. I think Harwood is probably finished as a credible reporter. He's a disaster. But, and, and he was, it was such a, a horribly put question and so obvious. And the Republicans coalesced around each other. It was actually pretty beautiful when you think about it. And all we want to do is be treated fairly. But with me, I don't care that much. Just give me a podium. What I would say is this. The networks have made a fortune because of me, not because of anybody else. You know, they were saying that the last cycle, they had two million and one million people and the networks didn't even want to broadcast it because nobody watched, okay? Nobody wanted to watch. Now they had 25 million people, 24 million people, 23 million people, and 16 million people. I mean, give me a break. So somebody said, how did they get there? And actually, Variety and Hollywood Reporter, who do report this stuff pretty well, much better than the political press, they said, solely for one reason, it was Trump. I'll take the credit. But I'll tell you what I also want. I think that wounded warriors and our veterans should be given some of the enormous profits being made on these debates. Enormous profits. By the way, beyond anything they ever envisioned. CNN was going to get $2,000 for a 30 second ad, they ended up getting 250,000. So she, they went from 2,000 to $250,000 for a 30 second ad. The networks and the cable are making a fortune and I think they should give some of the profits to the wounded warriors and the veterans. That's what I want. Uh, I'm giving them away. I'm giving the profits of my book, I'm giving them away to a lot of different, including the vets. Okay. 
Who are you with? Okay, good. It's a new, new form of reporting. Do you believe? They used to come up with cameras. He comes up with a cell phone. Go ahead. Let's go. Speak fast. Go ahead. I have been amazing with respect to the hiring of women. This building was built as the head person who was fantastic by a woman. And that was at a time when you didn't see that in the construction trades. I mean, it was totally unique. Uh, I have many, many executives upstairs and in different buildings that I have that are women. Many, a, a proportion that's close to 50%, might even be over 50% if I analyze it. And they get paid a lot of money, in many cases, more than men doing the same job. So women have always appreciated that about me. I've been, in terms of employment, really a standout, and I've been honored for doing so well with women. Yes. Yes, go ahead. French television. Are you going to be voting? I don't think so. So let's go. We don't have to worry about the French right now. Go ahead. What Jeb Bush was saying at the last debate, I don't know, but he didn't say it well. What, it, what is your question? Go ahead, behind you. You're with Telemundo. Ah, welcome. Welcome to Trump Tower. I like Telemundo, by the way. I like it better than Univision. I'm suing Univision for 500 million, so. Go ahead. Because the country is doing so poorly. It's a very accurate title. Because the, com the country is doing so poorly. Go ahead. That's good. They're going to have some demonstrations. Oh, good, because it'll get even higher ratings if they do that. I think it's fine. Look, I, I think they should demonstrate. Uh, ratings will go even higher than they are going to be. It's going to be one of the highest rated shows ever. And they're very excited about it. And I have a great relationship, as you know, from Telemundo with the Hispanics. You've treated me actually very fairly. Uh, won the poll recently in Nevada, won other polls. And in Nevada, I think I got 37% and leading everybody. So I've had a great relationship with the Hispanics. I have working for me thousands right now, thousands of Hispanics. I've had tens of thousands of people over the years working for me. I'm a job machine. I'm a job machine. And one of the things that does come out in every single poll and every single survey is that nobody for the economy, nobody's even close. I'm two, three, and you see that, two, three, four, five times greater than anybody else. And you almost say, like, it's about the jobs, it's about the economy, then how's anybody going to beat Trump, in all fairness? But I've had a great relationship with the workers, I've had a great relationship with jobs, and I've had an amazing relationship with the Hispanics. And I predict that I'm going to win the Hispanic vote. I think I'm going to win the Hispanic vote. I predict, yeah, I think I'm going to get the nomination, and I will win the White House. I think beating Hillary Clinton is going to be easy because her record is so bad. Okay. Go ahead. That's the question I like. How am I preparing for my SNL? Well, I'm meeting with Lorne Michaels in a little while, later on, after we, we're going to sign, I guess got thousands of people online, but we're going to sign, and then later on this evening, I'm meeting with Lorne Michaels and the whole staff, and we'll start the preparation. We'll pick our skits. Am I nervous? Not too nervous. Not too nervous. But we're going to, we'll do a good job, and we're going to have a fantastic show. We're going to all have a lot of fun. My Jeb impression? No, I don't want to do that. I don't like showing a person sleeping at a podium. Tom is asking, can Jeb make a comeback? I think it's going to be very hard. It's very hard. Not about money. I just think, you know, I came up with the energy, and I just think we need tremendous energy because we need a person that has tremendous personal energy to get us back on track. You can't do that when you don't have that. I think Marco is highly overrated, highly overrated. He doesn't have it. And all you have to do is look at his stance on things. Jeb, 
he lacks the quality that you need. We're talking about everybody in the world is ripping us off. You need a very strong person with tremendous energy. Thank you very much, folks. I'll take the job. But, but, and, and it's so important. And by the way, Ben Carson does not have that energy. We need somebody with tremendous energy to straighten out the military, to straighten out ISIS, to straighten out our horrible trade deals, to terminate Obamacare and come up with something far better for far less money. You need somebody with tremendous personal energy as president. We have a president right now that doesn't have energy. I mean, you think Obama has energy? He has no energy. And he's been a horrible president. We need somebody with great personal energy as a leader so that we can make great deals with other countries and do well in every other respect. And certainly Jeb does not have that energy, in my opinion. You where? From the Guardian. From the Guardian. Ah, they treat me very nicely in Scotland. Go ahead. Good, thank you. Well, we just went over that, honestly. We just went over that. And, and it's, you know, it's only going to make it hotter. Okay, another question. Go ahead. Say it again. You're going to see what we're going to do. You're going to see. But the whole thing with anchor babies, I turned out to be right. A person has a baby, lives in Mexico or lives in Asia or lives in many different places, has a baby, walks across the border, has the baby here. Now, we're responsible for that person for the next 85 years. I don't think so. And by the way, I was right. They were wrong. The 14th Amendment does not give them clearance on that. And if you wanted to do that in Mexico, or if you wanted to do that in almost any other country, where you have a baby in that country, and that country has that person for 85 years, including all of the costs of that person, they would laugh you right out of the country. You would be laughed out of the country so fast. So that turned out, I was 100% right. We'll have to worry about that. We're going to take care of it. And it's going to be done in a very humane way. But we're going to bring back our country. And we're going to have a wall. And Mexico's going to pay for the wall. And you know why they're going to pay? And I have great relationships with Mexico and phenomenal re relationships with the Mexican people. Phenomenal. And they buy apartments from me. They work for me by the thousands, by the thousands. Phenomenal relationships. But let me just tell you, we lose so much money with Mexico in terms of trade imbalance, $45 billion last year. Plus, we give Mexico billions and billions of dollars. They will pay for the wall, and it'll be very interesting. And you know what? People are going to come into this country, but they're going to come in legally, Sarah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Italian Deli News. Can you talk louder? Nobody can hear. I know a lot of European, he's just saying he's from Italy, a lot of the European countries are going to build walls to stop the immigration. Well, walls work. All you have to do is ask Israel. Walls work if it's properly constructed. Not the walls that these characters, these politicians that we have running our country who are a disgrace, all talk, no action politicians. They build a wall this big, they drive cars right through it. Walls work. All you have to do is go and see Israel. They will tell you that walls work. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. We need pomp and circumstance. Good question, actually. Our country has no spirit. Our country has no gravitas. Our country doesn't feel good about itself. And the primary reason is we have no victories. I mean, where have we had a victory? Where have we had a victory in trade? Where have we had a victory in, as an example, this horrible deal that was signed with Iran, where we're given $150 billion and we lose everything. We lose everything. 
It's a laughing stock of it. The worst deal, worst contract I've ever seen drawn. We have no victories. And I do write about it. We need some pomp and circumstance. We need spirit. We need a cheerleader. I thought seven years ago when Obama got elected, the one thing I thought that he would be a great cheerleader for the country, he's not. He's been a great divider for the country. He has been one of the great dividers of all time. I'm not saying dressed. It has nothing to do with dress. It has to do with the fact that what he says is very divisive. He has been a great divider for this country. And that should not have happened. Okay. Yes. No, Howie, I, I'll go any way they want. I don't care too much about the debates. Look, I'm the one that gets all the nasty questions anyway. Nobody else gets the really nasty questions. In a certain way, maybe they're defending me, although I will tell you they're not doing it for that reason. I think it's, I think it's irrelevant. I just, I like the debates. I've had the debates. I've done well in the debates. As you know, every single poll said I won all three debates. Now, I don't know if I did or not, but I certainly didn't do badly. But every single poll said, I, even CNBC's poll said I won the debate. So I like the debates. I think they're good for me. But we have to be treated a little bit fairly. As an example, Hillary Clinton, no tough questions. I mean, why didn't they ask about Bill? Why didn't they ask about all of the different things? No tough questions. Now, that was staged by the Democrats. And frankly, they did a very smart thing in the way they staged it. Well, we're going to stage something properly also. But as far as I'm concerned, I really don't care that much. I just want to debate. I think debating is a good thing. It's healthy. It gets everything into the open. But you don't want people like Harwood that read a question, blah, 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 that he wrote carefully, wrote. He thought he was such. His career, in my opinion, his career is probably ruined or certainly threatened. You can ask about anything you want. I mean, you have to ask about anything you want. Hillary had only softballs all night long. It was like this. Here, Hillary, hit this one over the park. So, yeah, go ahead. Are you from Russia? All right. I think our relationship with Russia will be very good. Vladimir Putin was on 60 Minutes with me three, three weeks ago, right? Putin. And they have one of the highest ratings they've had in a long time. So I'm going to give him total credit. But we will have a very good relationship, I think, with Russia. Now, maybe we won't. But I believe we will have a very good relationship with Russia. I believe that I will have a very good relationship with Putin. Go ahead. Sounds OK to me. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I think there are a lot of economic issues. We didn't talk about trade. We didn't talk about devaluations, right? We didn't talk about corporate inversions, which, by the way, none of the other candidates, they don't even know what it means. But we didn't talk about corporate inversions, where companies are leaving our country, massive companies, because they can't get their money back and because they get lower taxes elsewhere. So they're leaving and they're taking their jobs with them. The corporate inversion syndrome is a very important thing to be talking about. These are all things that weren't talked about at the debate. Instead, they talked about fantasy football. I mean, it was a big question, fantasy football. I'm saying, what about corporate inversions? Two and a half trillion dollars at least, I think it's probably twice that number, is in other countries wanting to come back. And because our system is so corrupt and, and terrible, they can't get the money back to invest in this country. So they don't talk about corporate inversions at the debates. They talk about fantasy football. That's, I mean, those are a few. Yeah? Go ahead, Sarah. Say it away. You don't talk. You have to talk loud enough. Right. I was against the war in Iraq, yes, very early on. I'll give it to you. Yeah, I have it upstairs. I don't know. I'll give it to you upstairs. Well, you know, you have to understand, I was a developer. A lot of people didn't care about my view in 2003, 2004. But there was a Reuters article taken from a magazine about my stance in 2004, I believe, in July of 2004. And it talked about my stance on 
how I felt about Iraq. And I said very strongly exactly what happened. I said, you will destabilize the Middle East, and when you destabilize the Middle East, Iran will take over Iraq. That's exactly what's happening. And they'll take over the oil reserves, which are among the largest in the world, and in addition, other bad things will happen. The other bad things are ISIS. I said that in 2004, and that was an article that was taken from a magazine, which was previous to that. I felt that for a long time. I, it's a great, that's your best question that you've ever asked me, Sarah. Sarah, finally, you're asking me this great question. Sarah from CNN, terrific person. Do I think that it's time for some of the other Republicans in the race that are registering zero, in a couple of cases, they have zero with an arrow pointing left, which I assume is a mistake, because that's less than zero. I assume that's not happening. Do I think it's time to have some of the other Republican candidates drop out? Yes. There are too many people. Well, I don't want to get personal, but you can look at the poll numbers. Look, if a person's been campaigning for four or five months, and they're at zero, or one, or two percent, they should get out. Like, you know, look at me, I go to Florida, and look at the numbers that just came out in Florida, 37 percent, Georgia. So, I mean, those are real numbers. These numbers that these people have, and I often ask myself, I asked Mark yesterday, what are they doing? Do they do this for their brand? Because I happen to think it's, it's very bad for their brand. I think Walker did a good thing. I think the way Walker, he saw it wasn't happening, wasn't going to happen, and he just got out quickly. You know, he was favored, don't forget, you know. Now that was before Trump was going to happen, right? But he was favored for a period of time. He was favored. Walker, Governor Walker, they thought he was going to win. What happened is he got out. I think the way he got out was great. I think he did a really smart thing for himself. And frankly, other people should get out because I would like to personally have more time to talk about the problems of the United States and more importantly, how to solve the problems because we can solve the problems. So it's a great question. People should get out. Yes. Ivanka. Oh, they just said one of the biggest applause lines. It's true. I get is when I talk about my daughter, Ivanka, she was just at Fortune magazine for like something like Woman of the Year, which is great. I'm very proud. She doesn't know. Ivanka, just say hello, okay? But Ivanka is going to be very involved, and Melania is going to be very involved very soon. They're going to be coming out very soon. Oh, Ivanka is going to Iowa. When are you going to Iowa? Very soon. Okay? Yes, Mark. It's a good question. I would say, I don't see threats. I mean, whatever it is I have to do. Mark is saying, what are the top threats, let's say, to your candidacy? Who knows? I mean, you're in a crazy world of politics. People change their minds. I'm going to make America great again. Nobody else is going to be able to do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it, in my opinion, better than ever before. And I think that's awfully tough to compete with. And one of the reasons that in my book, I actually put financials in there. I show some of the developments, and I have many, many more, because you can only, Simon & Schuster, you actually kept me to eight or nine pages, right? And there are four or five on a page, but I show some of the great developments that I've done that are so successful and so incredible and so financially good. I show my financial statement from a year and a half, two years ago. Now it's even better, but we didn't have that certified yet. So I, I do that not in a braggadocious way. I do that because that's the kind of thinking our country needs right now. We are run by people that are incompetent. We are run by people who, in so many words, I hate to use the word stupid, but you have to use that word unless they have bad intentions, which I don't believe they do. But we are run by incompetent people. We have incompetent leadership. There are so many things. Like I mentioned, corporate inversion. The Democrats want the money to come back. Who, who doesn't? The Republicans want the money to come back. For three years, the Democrats have said, we want the money to come back. For three years, the Democrats and the Republicans agree 100%. You have a vast majority, maybe everybody. For three years, guess what? They haven't done anything, right? They can't even get along when they agree. 
So here's the thing where we can take trillions of dollars, bring it back into this country, rebuild big parts of our country with it. Companies can spend that money in our country. We have everybody agrees it should be done for years, and they can't do it. That's a part of the problem. Well, you're going to look. You're going to look. A lot of controversy with Mr. S a lot of controversy with Mr. Singer. There are those people that probably wouldn't have wanted him to back, but we'll see. I'll talk to you. Go ahead. Oh, well, they'll agree. No, they'll agree. They just didn't want to go through the unfair questions because they weren't questions, they were statements. You see, they were asking Katie, they were giving statements in a sarcastic, disgusting way. And by the way, I think Becky is terrific, and I think Carl is terrific. But I think John Harwood is not very good at what he does. But I think Becky Quick is a terrific person. I think Carl is a terrific person. But I will tell you, John Harwood was a disgrace to CNBC. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. Well, the Fred, it's, it's really an interesting question, actually. The question is, should the Fed raise rates? They are not raising them because Obama has asked them not to raise them. In my opinion, he wants to get out of office because we are in a bubble. And when those rates are raised, a lot of bad things are going to happen or potentially going to happen. And in my opinion, Janet Yellen is highly political and she's not raising rates for a very specific reason because Obama told her not to because he wants to be out playing golf in a year from now and he wants to be doing other things and he doesn't want to see a big bubble burst during his administration. Janet Yellen should have raised the rates. She's not doing it because the Obama administration and the president doesn't want her to. And if she does it, you see what happens every time there's even a thought of raising them just a little bit. And one of the problems that we have is our currency right now is not competitive with other currencies. Because if you look at the devaluations of China, of Japan, of many, many different countries, they make it impossible for our companies to compete with them because we don't have leaders that know how to say to China, don't do that, don't do that. Because if you do that, we're going to put a big fat tax on you. Don't do that. And you know what? If you said that, they wouldn't do it, if you had the right message. All right, how about one more question? Howie, do you have another question? I love Howie Kurtz. He always treats me so nice. Who? Yes, yes. I'm on, really, I'm focused on one very big election, one very important election. There's some pretty good elections. I'm not watching any of them in particular. I'll be watching them on Tuesday night. But I'll be out there. We'll be out voting. But the, the election that I'm watching is the election for the presidency of the United States. That is going to be, in my opinion, this will be truly one of the most important elections we've ever had in this country. We're so far behind, and we cannot go another four years with incompetent leadership. Good question. Fine. Okay. What else? One more question. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. That's a good question. Okay. So Simon & Schuster came up to me. They wanted to do a book. They wanted it to do on success and how do you do this and how do you build it. And that's what the book is largely about. But we talk so much about the country. And I said, I'll do it, but we have to talk about the country. What happened is they sent this incredible photographer up to do a book cover, to do a picture. And he did some great almost as good as you. He did, my friend over here, did some great photos. I'm smiling, I'm happy, I looked good, everything was fine. And then he took one where I wasn't like really thinking about a photo. And it turned out to be a nasty picture. And then the book was written and the title was given and the only really terrible picture I had was that one. It's a terrible, horrible, nasty picture. But when you're talking about crippled America, and you're talking about all of the problems we have, I can't have a big smiley face up there. So that's how we picked it. So we picked the worst photo taken of me. I would have loved to have had a beautiful smiling picture, but somehow that doesn't go with the title of the book, or frankly, the contents of the book. And actually, Simon & Schuster agreed with me, okay? Yeah, let me have it. Say it again. What? 
Are the other Republicans afraid to debate? Well, some of them should be. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Sorry.